30 times of Genshin Impact players, except I'm coming for your throats. The casuals. These are the people who know how the game works. They know how to play, they have decently level characters, but they don't play every day. If they played regularly enough, they could probably 36 star Spiral Abyss, or get close to that every time it resets. But instead, their potential is mostly limited to daily commissions, farming, and exploring from time to time, because they actually go outside and are probably productive members of society. A true anomaly in this fandom full of chronically online people, the meta players. These are people who actively care about the meta of Genshin Impact, Despite this game being a 99.99999% single player experience, they want their characters, their entire account even, to be as optimal as possible. They want to own the most optimal 5 star DPSs in the game, and get their most optimal constellation and their signature weapon from the weapon banner. Despite the fact that it is possible to 36 star Abyss, with teams of entire 4 stars, and with zero signature weapons. But they don't say anything to anyone else, they really don't care if somebody else isn't a meta player. They just want to work on themselves and their account to be as meta as possible for themselves and themselves only. The meta players phase 2. These players, however, are way more extreme than just regular meta players. They probably aren't productive members of society, and their rooms probably look a little something like this. They are meta players, but they believe everyone should be a meta player. Despite, again, this being a mostly single player game. These are the types of people who pop up on your TikToks or Twitter posts saying your rotations are so bad or why isn't your hotel doing a million damage with her burst. They're also the type of people to say that 36 starring Spiral Abyss is easy, and then they go on 10 hour rants about not having any in-game content, despite having a huge backlog of side quests to do, because the only lore they're remotely interested in are the Archon quests, and that's a big maybe. The meta despisers. These people despise any kind of meta players. Even the word meta? is enough to make their eyes twitch. Be it out of a bad reputation that meta players have for being too toxic, or simply out of being salty because they have bad artifact luck. These players don't understand why some people always have to make things a competition, especially when Spiral Abyss and Domains don't even have online competitive features to them, like leaderboards. Actually, thinking about that, that would be a pretty cool addition to add. Hoyaverse, take notes. But I digress. These players wish that people could just be more chill and realise there's more to the game than just fighting. They preach let people play the way they want to play, while conveniently forgetting that there are players out there who want to be meta in Genshin Impact. The players who aren't meta, but know how to build. These players are in between the meta despisers and the meta players. They don't particularly care for the meta, but they want to make their favourite characters strong. If they get too power hungry though, they run the risk of becoming the meta player they so don't wish to become. Players who know how to build, but have the worst artifact luck. These players are the same ones I spoke about before, except their artifact luck is dead in the water, so they have no hope of becoming a meta player at all. The is this good player. This player is somebody who gets an artifact with 41% crit damage as a substat and posts it to Twitter with the caption, is this good? Like, it's fine to flex, but this is the most annoying way to do it. Enough. The judgmental player. They're like the second phase meta players, but more annoying. You see, with toxic meta players, they have somewhat of a reason to be toxic. They want themselves and other people to complete Spiral Abyss and be as optimal as possible, even if it means imposing on others. The judgmental player, however, just judges you what for no reason, you? most likely to show off how much better they are at the game than you. You could post your DPS Barbara build with 50.1% crit rate and 265% crit damage, and this player will crawl out of the woodworks to say, um, why is your crit rate only 50%? You need at least 75.6% crit rate for your 
characters to do any damage, the player who just doesn't know how to build. You probably play Genshin for more than just the combat, and that's great, good for you. With that being said though, it probably takes you ages to finish your commissions, and you've probably never touched Spiral Abyss. The Babies Oh, the new Genshin players. You've probably picked up this game over the past couple of weeks or months or so, and you're either playing casually, or you're speedrunning and you're already at AR50. Either way, you're still learning how the game works, and what sort of playstyle works for you. So I won't come for your throats in this video, because you're probably going to experience that at some point on Genshin Twitter. Genshin Twitter. Speaking of Genshin Twitter, let's talk about them. Any sort of Genshin controversy has pretty much always stemmed from Genshin Twitter. So you know you're dealing with the creme de la creme of toxicity and brain deadness when you step onto that cursed app. Except for my Twitter. My Twitter is cool. You should really follow that. These are the type of players who are talking about the game on Twitter more than they're actually playing the game itself. So if they have, let's say, 300 hours into Genshin Impact, they probably have double that on Genshin Twitter. Not to mention they complain about everything. If you know Genshin Impact through Twitter alone, you may not want to even pick up the game at all, due to the sheer toxicity, or apparent toxicity, of its players. Just don't go on Genshin Twitter, don't go in that deep, your brain will rot. The PlayStation players. Time for take -off. Right now, right here. The PC players. These are the people who have spent thousands of real money for a PC just to play this silly little anime game. The mobile players. The players waiting for a Nintendo Switch release. I am so sorry. The lore players. These are the types of players who never skip any dialogue and actually pay attention to the lore. And all types of lore, not just stuff from the Archon quests. They're part of the backbone for this community because every time there is a whiff of new lore in this game, you bet you're gonna come across a thread about it on the non-toxic side of Twitter. Or maybe repost it onto Instagram. Maybe. Does that happen? These are the guys who come up with the crazy impressive theories about this game. And that is so precious, because most of the Genshin fandom can't read. With that being said, as smart as you guys are about lore and all the theories you come up with, your builds could probably use some work. You know what would go well with reading up on the Genshin Impact lore? Snacks. Which is why it's a good time to take a break and talk about today's sponsors. This video is brought to you by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box where you will get 20 of the most latest, exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavoured Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. Sakura Co is also a monthly Japanese snack subscription box where you will receive 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snack items, including Japanese teas and one special Japanese tableware with your box every month. Sakura Co helps in partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. If you want to enjoy pop Japanese snacks, you can choose Tokyo Treats, but if you want traditional Japanese treats, you can enjoy Sakura Ko instead. This month's Tokyo Treat Box is filled with limited edition and exclusive pulp culture snacks found in Tokyo's number one spot for all things manga, anime, and electronics, Akihabara, such as Autumn Chestnut Kit Kats and the Mystery Flavored Fanta. While you watch me try those two, which by the way, they were great, I'm definitely going to be drinking the Fanta on stream a lot. But here's a clip of me reading the booklet provided in the box to see if the snacks that I want to try meet my dietary requirements. The booklet is also full of fun facts, such as this one. Akihabara was the centre of Japan's radio boom and has such continued to be a hub of innovation. This earned Akiba another well-deserved nickname, Electric Town. Sakura Ko invites you to experience Japanese Autumn with their Colors of Koyo snack box. This box is filled with awesome themed sweets made by their beloved Japanese local makers. In this box you will find very cute maple leaf shaped snacks like the Momoji Manju and the Momoji Cookie. Here's a fact. In Japan, Autumn lasts from September to November. Similarly to the Sakura season, Japanese people will have the opportunity to enjoy the splendor of awesome scenery at its peak 
through a tradition known as koyo. Koyo is a Japanese word that refers to the changing of colours of autumn foliage, which is dominated by amber and crimson. The custom of going out to admire the beautiful fall foliage dates back to the 8th century. Click the link in the description below or in the pinned comments and use my code to get $5 off your first Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co box. Again, I would like to thank Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co for sponsoring today's video once again. Anyways, let's get back to- These guys are the complete opposite of lore players. They aren't interested in any of the quests at all. All they're interested in is the gameplay, the battle, the grinds. They're not invested in the slightest about where our sibling is. In fact, they see quests as a chore and wish all quests, including the Archon quests, were skippable. Just a hunch here, but these guys are probably the same people who can 100% a new region in less than 24 hours and complain that Genshin never has any contents. The gatekeepers. These people have a superiority complex when it comes to pixelated characters in a video game. They think they are so much better than everybody else who didn't pull on a character's first banner, and they look down on those who got said character on their rerun banner instead. Oh, you didn't pull for Yai Miko on her first banner, and now you're waiting on her rerun? Well, you're a fake Miko fan, and you don't deserve her. I'm so much better than you because I am an OG Yai Miko haver. I pulled her on day one. Even the people who pulled for her on her first banner and didn't get her on day one are inferior to me. That is probably the conversation you'd get out of one of these people. So you're better off staying away from them and leaving them alone in their echo chamber because they are too stubborn to listen to reason. The explorers. These people just want to walk around, explore the environments and overall chill out. They're not hardcore character farmers. They wish casually and they like the story, but they don't make the theories, they just consume them. In that sense, they're kind of a bit of everything. They use their time to fall in love with the scenery of this game, unlike in real life. People who refuse to do ascension quests. These people need to believe in themselves more. They think that they can't take on the enemies in the overworld if they do their ascension quest. As somebody who did all of their ascension quests ASAP, if you're at a point where you're putting off doing your ascension quest for months, you're probably ready for that next level. Believe in yourself more. The free to plays. You're either a casual player, a student, or somebody who just doesn't spend money on video games. Whatever the case, you're probably the reason why my Saving Prima Gems video is the most successful video on my channel, so thank you for that. <laughs> the braggy free-to-plays. You're like the guys from before, except you're the ones who give the free-to-plays a bad name. When people say the phrase, you don't need to ask a free-to-play if they're free-to-play, they think of you, because you guys will take every opportunity under the sun to say that you're free-to-play. Yeah, I got Sino and his signature weapon. Free to play, by the way. I got Yan Fei to hit 200k. Free to play, by the way. I'm so much better than everybody else who spends money on Genshin Impact because I'm free to play. Stop. You're just as sad as the rest of us Genshin players. You're nothing that special. The whales. These are people who have the money to C6, R5, every character who comes out on their first banner and yet are still able to function in real life. How do you have this much money? Sharing is caring, you know. The whales in denial. These are people who may not see six R5 characters and weapons, but they will do anything to at least get the character that they want. Their thought process goes a little something like this. Oh, I lost my 50-50. Well, I mean, I do have the means to use my wallet to get this character even if I get them a hard pity. It's not like I do this for every character. Plus, I'm getting paid in about a week or so, so I'll be getting that money back soon anyway. Yeah, I, I guess that's fine. I'm not a whale though. Like, <laughs> I'm not even going for constellations. I, I, I just want this character. Players who farm for artifacts, but forget to farm for talent and weapon materials. These players care a little too much about getting correct artifacts. So much so that they forget that their talents are equally as important as well as their weapon. They find artifact farming more fun than talent farming and weapon farming. Even if the artifacts they get that day are absolute dog water, they still got a kick out of it. To them, talent material farming and weapon material farming is boring and they have to muster up the motivation to grind said domains. So if you see anyone with a character with cracked artifacts but their talents are like 
at level 3 and their weapon is at like level 50. <laughs> you know why. The Savers. These people are the ones who have beaten the Genshin Impact's gambling addiction. There is a character that they want so badly that they have gone through the pain barrier of learning not to wish whenever they hit 160 primos, then not wishing at 1600 primos, then not wishing at 5000 primos. After that point, they've become so numb to the temptation of wishing that they no longer know what a wishing addiction even looks like. What I'm trying to say is that they enjoy inflicting pain onto themselves for the greater good. For this reason, they probably think they're an anime protagonist. The Wish Addicts. Wishing Addicts are either new players trying to build up their character collection, or they're a higher AR and they genuinely have a problem. Once they get even the smallest whiff that they're at 160 primos, they're gonna wish, regardless of the banner. They'll even wish on the standard banner. Somebody needs to stage an intervention for these guys and never take them to an actual casino or an arcade for that matter. The Wish Addicts in Denial. These are typically the people who blame limited five stars for ruining their pity for somebody that they were trying to save up for. They'll say something along the lines of, I hate the Raiden Shogun. She made me lose my pity for Hu Tao. Translation, I've been saving for Hu Tao's banner and I've been getting really impatient. I just want to wish. So I wished on the Raiden Shogun's banner so I could try and build up my pity and relieve my wishing temptation for a little while. I was fully aware that pulling on the Shogun's banner would ruin what I've been working so hard for over the past few weeks and months, but I've ignored that risk. And now, I'm probably not gonna get Hu Tao until Halloween 2023. I'm not gonna hold myself accountable for this, so I'm just going to blame the fictional character instead. The Teapotters. These people are not interested in the idea of farming. They don't like fighting in domains, it's too much effort for them. Instead, they like to dedicate their time to decorating their teapots. They like to collect realm currency every day for the sole purpose of decoration. And these players actually get excited about finding furniture chests. They thrive off of making their teapot look as best as it can. And they probably have fully built teapots pots in multiple realms. For this reason, I'm willing to predict that these people have around a thousand hours in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And finally, Copium players. These are players who do have valid criticisms of this game, and they hoped for Hoyaverse to implement changes such as more permanent game modes, but they wish that Hoyaverse would add features to the game that they're probably never gonna add, and as such they get frustrated. But these players probably aren't watching this video right now because they quit the game after hearing about that one interview about endgame content. Despite them putting their wallets into this game with the hopes of wishing for cracked units for the specific purpose of helping them with potential endgame content. Oopsie daisies. Hey there. If you like Genshine Impact, Animal Crossing or games in general, join our chill Discord server. Thanks and have a nice day.